Without a doubt, Alexander Albon is among the standout drivers of the first half of the season. He already picked up 11 points with his Williams, finding himself 13th in the championship. His performance also caught the eye of the competition, and there is speculation in the media about a move to a better team for Albon. Williams has been completely reliant on Albon this season, as 22-year-old rookie Logan Sargent continues on a trend of showing flashes of potential but not quite pulling it together. And that matters more now. Last year, Nicholas Latifi being nowhere near Albon was irrelevant because Williams was a distant last. If Haas or Alfa Romeo or Alfa Tauri got their acts together, a one-sided driver lineup could have big repercussions for Williams winning a valuable championship fight. Given Williams has no further development planned, it is relying entirely on what it already has to close out this championship position. And it would surely be more confident in doing that if it didn't look like an Albon solo effort. Things started brightly enough in Bahrain, where the test at the same track preceded the season opener. And Sargent has had some good moments this season. The problem is that they've been rather fleeting and certainly haven't translated into anything significant. The two races after the summer break have summed that up perfectly. Though he has shown sparks of promise, and done so while the car has been stronger, like getting into Q3 for the first time at Zandvoort, he also does things like then crashing out of that Q3. In Italy Sargent looked a good three-tenths of a second off Albon at his best, failed to get out of Q2, and couldn't pull off the one-stop like Albon did in the race, although this was complicated by not having the newer spec front wing, after his crashes at Zandvoort. Alex was never a super talent. The year George Russell took the Formula 2 title and Lando Norris finished second, Albon was the number three driver in the championship. Four wins in the 2018 season was a respectable number, yet F1 teams were not lining up for Albon. While Russell and Norris were able to make the move to Formula 1, Albon looked set to continue his racing career in Formula E. But suddenly there was Helmut Marko. The Red Bull advisor needed a driver for the latter team in a hurry, having sidelined Brendan Hartley on his Marko's moments earlier. In November 2018, there were still few decent drivers on the market, and somewhat by necessity he therefore ended up with Albon. He did very nicely for the first half of the season at Toro Rosso. Not overly top, but solid. In any case, his performance was enough for Marco and Christian Horner to transfer him to Red Bull Racing in his first season right after the summer break. Although that switch was mainly prompted by Red Bull being dissatisfied with Pierre Gasly, much less because they thought Albon was ready for the top team. As it turned out, Albon was also crushed by Max Verstappen, as the Dutchman now does with every teammate. Criticism came and the inexperienced Albon did not improve as a result. He too was eventually thanked for services rendered. After a year in DTM, however, Albon was given a second chance in Formula 1. Freed from all the pressure and no doubt learning from previous experiences, he has been proving himself the absolute leader of Williams for a season and a half now. With a lot of support from team principal James Vowles, he is flourishing in 2023 like no one else. At Williams, Albon has become a tyre whisperer. He showcased these skills last year itself, when he raced the entire Australian Grand Prix with just one set of hards. This year, he has combined his skills with the Williams straight line speed. He has put in amazing qualifying performances. This means he has often found himself ahead of much faster cars. However, he has been able to maintain his position because of his superior speed. But it's evident in races like Zandvoort that the Williams FW45 is good in the corners as well. Much more interesting is to see how Albon's performance compares to his rivals. In 12 Grand Prix in 2023, the tie will start on average from the 12.9 position. That with a car that is not considered the best on the grid. Especially on high-speed circuits, the Williams excels, at least in Albon's hands, on that one fast lap. During races, the Williams weaknesses show up more often, and yet Albon already managed to finish in the points three times. His seventh place in Canada was spectacular, mainly because of the way Albon kept the faster cars of Esteban Ocon and Lance Stroll in his mirrors. Not for a moment did Albon give them a chance to pass the Williams. But can Albon return to Red Bull Racing in the future? Suppose Red Bull were to put him alongside Verstappen again, there is a very good chance the Dutchman would beat Albon almost every race. But will the margin structurally be more than three tenths, like the difference on average between Verstappen and Sergio Perez's? So Albon proved this season that he is making maximum use of all the material made available to him. If he brings that quality from his Williams years to Red Bull, he will definitely stay close to Verstappen.
Moreover, Albon is not the type to put his car in the gravel trap on the first lap of free practice. A return to Red Bull Racing does not seem realistic at the moment. But is Albon less than Ferrari's Carlos Sainz, who may eventually move to Audi? Or what if Lando Norris leaves McLaren in a year's time? Then Albon would certainly not be out of place. If he keeps up the current line, that opportunity at a better team than Williams is certainly going to come. Helmut Marko has been impressed with the driver so far but reveals that there is nothing he can do to sign him again. In an interview, here is what he had to say about Alex Albon. The Williams is now a fast car, and in combination with Albon it is now actually Q3 capable. I think Alex is doing a great job. He is unfortunately tied to Williams until the end of 2025. Albon has a contract that goes beyond the 2024 season with Williams and sees his short-term future with the team. But as he continues to show his worth by outperforming the FW45, it will not be long before he gets back into a race-winning car, something this karting prodigy has shown he deserves a second chance of. Though it was recently announced by Mercedes that both George Russell and Lewis Hamilton will be their drivers through the 2025 Formula 1 season, this announcement could very well be the pathway for Albon's advancement into a big-time seat with the Brackley-based team. This, of course, is contingent on Hamilton either retiring or leaving the team at the end of the 2025 season. There are a number of indicators that the 27-year-old will end up with the Silver Arrows as Hamilton's replacement. One is the close relationship that Mercedes have with Williams. Over the last decade, Mercedes have supplied Williams with key parts to their cars. Going the other way, we have seen Bottas and Russell make the switch from Williams to Mercedes, and both have done very well. Additionally, at the end of last season, Mercedes strategy director James Vowles joined Williams as their new team principal. These two teams have formed a great partnership that has only gotten stronger as time has gone on. If Albon is able to maintain a high level of consistency and bring Williams back into the midfield battle, then there is no reason why he should not find himself back with a top team. Another detail to make note of is Albon's close friendship with Russell. The pre-existing chemistry between the pair could translate well on the racetrack, and surely Mercedes could take that into consideration. With that, Russell could also do some friendly convincing on his own in an attempt to get Albon to become his teammate. Albon has done well and improved massively since being dropped by Red Bull after the 2020 season. His current trajectory has him in line for another seat with one of the top teams, and that team could very well be Mercedes in 2026. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think we will see Albon at a top team like Mercedes, or maybe Red Bull? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.